Okay, good morning. This is me now at this moment here sitting by the beach. You can hear the sound of the ocean, right? Sitting by the beach. So I'm sitting by the beach. I have my iPad and I'm here trying to share with you some ancient knowledge that probably will allow us to understand nature. So the purpose of this series of videos is to understand nature. This word is very powerful. It means stand under nature. So we are surrounded by nature. We could figure this model, the body-mind system. Uh, body-mind system means matter and energy is what we are, both both of them interacting with nature through our senses of perception and our systems of action. And we're here just wondering about how this universe works, how is everything created. And the purpose of science is to transform these questions into wonder, from how to wow, right? We want to go deeper into the mysteries of nature to have this state of, yeah, wonder, state of, I would say, spirituality. Feel the connection. When we understand the connection with nature, we feel this spiritual being that we are. So from curiosity to spirituality, I am starting this journey today. So we start with questions and we end up with wonder. Before, <clears throat> before I share anything in this first matrix, that it's a conceptual map, I need to acknowledge where these ideas come from. They just did not appear in my head. These ideas were written more than 5,000 years ago in the Ashtavakra Gita. So Ashtavakra... and Patanjali Yoga Sutras. These ideas were written and tested by time for more than 8,000 years probably from the Ashtavakra Gita. Um, <clears throat> and we, we get them through the Vedic tradition. So this is all Vedic science. Now, if there is one nature, there should be one science. And the ways, or, or one way of, or one way of explaining nature through science, through logical thinking. And and the way to to explain uh, or to understand nature that the rishis in the Vedic tradition used was just sitting uh, and uh, meditating. So meditation, we know the benefits of meditation, but meditation can also be a learning tool. So in this series of videos, I will go through some you know, stages of first bring up, bring your awareness to a certain, to a certain question, awareness to a certain um, aspects of nature. And then we'll do some, some conceptual understanding about it. We'll talk about the concepts that explain that. So that's the, the stage of abstraction. And then finally, um, we could build some maps, some conceptual maps to, to understand how through concepts we are able to explain nature. So these three stages should be then completed by meditation. So we talk we look, we write, and then we pause at the end of a matrix and meditate. And if things work as I expect they will work, after meditating on these aspects of nature, we will be able to complete a conceptual map that could allow us to apply application of these concepts. So that is the journey that we are, I'm inviting you to start today. So the first thing is to accept this model. This is a model. There's no, 
There's no difficulty in accepting the idea that we are here sitting on earth, surrounded by water, air, the atmosphere, the hydrosphere, surrounded by, or in the presence, under the presence of this sun, I'm going to call that the fire element. And all around us and inside of us, there is space. So this is how we, uh, we see nature. 99% or 99.9% .9 of the universe is just space. And that space is not only outside of us, but also inside of us, right? So we're going to look at five elements in nature. This is the model that the Vedic science or the Vedic rishis used to explain nature and discover laws in nature, discover applications of these laws. But most of all is to reach this wonderful state of awe and wonder, state of spirituality. So this is what I intend to end the journey with, you know, from being rational thinkers to being, you know, spiritual beings. If we achieve that, we'll be happy. So mind matters, of course. Mind matters. Because if you think about it, the mind is the only problem we have. We don't have problem with what is happening. It's outside of us. Our problem is, is how we react to what happens inside of us. So we're going to use uh, meditation as a way of learning uh, nature. And we have to start by understanding this idea of a system, right? This is the first concept. From a cell to, to a body-mind system, right? What is a system? A group of elements that uses e energy to work. So. The concept system, the concept energy, and the concept work are connected to each other. It's like a circular definition, right? Energy is the input of the system. Work is the output of the system, right? So through uh, interacting with the environment, a cell works. Through interacting with the environment, a human being works, right? So input energy, output work. I'm going to change the color there, right, to distinguish. All right, so that is the proposed journey. We talked about the benefits of meditation. This is all researched and conclusions from research, benef benefits, uh, well-being, it reduces our stress, our aging. It adds hours to our day. Meditation is a very powerful tool for wellness. Uh, my, my take is also that it improves our learning because it makes our mind sharper, right? We have a sharper mind, so we're able to focus more and increase our span of attention. So at the end, uh, like I said, at the end of these conceptual maps, please take 10 minutes to meditate on these concepts, or even 20 minutes would be even better. And just guide your, or let your mind guide your thoughts through these uh, maps and see if we can learn science by doing nothing, right? All right, so we're gonna start with the first matrix. So, we're going to complete this matrix by columns. We're going to look at the first column. This is the body-mind system. Energy coming from the sun, energy coming from the water that we drink, from the food, from the earth, from the air that we breathe. All these sources of energy come into our body-mind system, right? Through five doors. Uh, these are called the systems of perception. Now, <clears throat> We want to fit, and not arbitrarily, we want to fit in, in a way that it makes sense to us, the five systems of perception to the five elements of nature. This is what we have learned through Ayurveda. 
Ayurveda is the a the uh, Ayurveda, the ancient, most ancient science ever created by human beings, right? Still, still acknowledged today, still studied in universities as um, Indian medicine systems, but it goes beyond medicine. It is about how to breathe, how to eat, how to live. You know, it's a system of, I would say, a philosophical system also, right? So I don't claim any kind of authorship on this, but I invite you to doubt. I invite you to discuss these thoughts with yourself or with myself if you disagree. I am just... Um, I am just posting what have been written before, like I said. So, <clears throat> let's look at the first sense, the sense of sight. We are connected to the sun through the sense of sight. In fact, everything we see is just light. Even the sky, we see the sky, it's light. We see the water in the ocean, it's light, right? We see the flowers in the trees on earth. It's only light. So, the sense of sight is obviously connected to the fire element. Just accepting that idea, um, if it makes sense with you. The sense of taste, of course, is connected to the water element more than anything else. Why? Because we taste through our salivary glands, through our mouth, which is mainly watery. And everything we eat is just water that tastes different in a fruit. The sense of smell, interesting, they connected the sense of smell with the earth element. And it makes sense, one would think, ah, smell should be connected to the air element. But <clears throat> we can't smell the air, we can only smell uh, molecules that come from the earth, like the perfume of a flower or organic matter that is rotting, you know. The sense of smell is made um, is triggered by molecules that are present on Earth. So smell, taste, sight, and now we have the sense of touch. The skin, the biggest organ in the body, the organ that envelopes the whole of the body. The skin is what connects us to the air. Right? It is the interface between the body-mind system and the air and through the skin we perceive the heat coming in or coming out. If it comes out we feel cold, if it comes in we feel hot, right? The skin, the sense of touch is connected to the air element or related to the air element. And finally, no options but to connect the sense of hearing, the sense of you know, uh, oh sorry, here, the sense of hearing we uh, connected or they connected with a space element and it makes sense because what we hear becomes just electromagnetic vibrations that go from our ears to our brains. And the only sense system that connects with both hemisphere of the brain, you know there is a left and a right hemisphere, the ears are the only sense of perception that directly connect with both of them. Uh, <clears throat> anything that we hear is a wave that comes into our ears. It could be a wave of compression of air. Or it could be sound waves coming from a speaker or whatever. But they are transformed into electromagnetic waves into our brain. And that is connecting us directly with the whole of the nervous system. So the sense of here, the rishis in in the ancient Vedic scriptures connected with. So this is us <clears throat> perceiving energy through sound, light, food. Easy to understand, easy to accept. And that is the first column in our matrix. So we're going to complete it now here. This is empty. If you want, you can spend a few minutes pondering about this and then completing these five words in these five spaces. I'll give you freedom to pause and 
ponder about how we perceive the universe. So here the first question is how, oh, how do we perceive nature? And this is a big question because we have to study how each of these senses works, right? The, the, how the eyes work, how the ears work. By itself, only this question is a book of science. 